All right, that was Suit of Lights by the Black Math Experiment. And I'm here with Jeff, with one F, from that band, that very band. The Hi. lesser of two singers. The, the background singer, I guess. So, so that song, Suit of Lights, that song got you in trouble. I understand. That, that's uh, that is one of the things that's in the in the book that I just put out about uh, the band. The Bible spelled backwards does not change the fact that you cannot kill David Arquette and other things I learned in the Black Math Experiment. I like to have uh, brevity and specificity in the same sentence, if at all possible. Um, we were playing that song. Whenever we do that song live, the best thing about it is that it's got that endless guitar solo, which is really intense live because you can just see Bill's you know little fingers just flying as fast. He burns picks literally while he's playing it. Mm. But the rest of us don't have a whole lot to do, so I used to think it'd be great if you started throwing out Christmas presents to the audience. So I would go to the dollar store, and I would buy like twenty, thirty things, and I you know the you could find great stuff, especially like knockoff Disney stuff or recordings of Ronald Reagan's speeches. And the other thing you can get there is Bibles, and they're very cheap and they're very easy to wrap, and they fly well when you throw them out in the audience. Yeah, it's got a good heft. So we, we um, when we were in Dallas, I started doing this, and I'm sitting there, you know, throwing on, you just dressed like a maniac, grinning like an idiot, and then all of a sudden I notice what I swear is snow falling in the club. And I, when I look up and I realize that somebody, whoever got the Bible, had taken it and started ripping it into teeny tiny little chunks. Oh, no. Apparently they weren't very happy with that gift. And because Bible paper is so thin and easy, they threw it up in the sky, got sucked into the air conditioning system, and it was now literally raining pieces of scripture all over the club. And it was it was like when Alice Cooper threw a chick out. I mean, just 20 people just, ah, just ripping it up. And yeah, you can never predict what what somebody's going to do and it's always going to be the worst possible thing. Well, you know, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to cause any trouble, but at the time I thought it was hilarious cuz I'm a bad person. And uh, you know, the next day I got all this hate mail from people who say you hate Jesus. I'm like, it's a book. I got it for a dollar. I'm did not mean to do it and I'm sorry. And then like four times as many people emailed me about apologizing. They were much more upset that I had said I was sorry. So now I don't say I'm sorry about anything. I just is like, yeah, well, what are you gonna do? Uh, it's good to have a consistent policy. So that's just one of the stories I guess you talk about in your book. Yeah. Nothing if not controversial. <laughs> um, the book just came out. Uh, it's on Amazon. Read, yeah, It's on Amazon. We read through it. We'll talk about where you can get it and everything. Uh, it's a pretty solid read. It chronicles uh, your life before the Black Math Experiment, mm -hmm. um, some earlier projects you were involved in, your upbringing, and how it all eventually led to the Black Math Experiment. I guess the bulk of the book is about the crazy ride that was this band you were in for uh, how many years was it? It was four years, and if you believe John no Nova Lomax from the Houston Press, that is that is a band's lifespan. Most bands last four years, and then for some reason they just seem to implode. And at the time I read that article, I was, I said, no, that's never going to happen to us. But it's it's scary how true that is. How for some reason past the four year mark, a band has the hardest time holding on to the fire and the optimism and just the love of doing it. You know, the world crashes in upon you. Mm. Well, I won't ask you when you thought the band had finally started to decompose, but I will ask you what you thought the best moment was. What was the best moment? Um, well, David Arquette Day was a, was a big deal. Mm. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with our work, we wrote a song called You Cannot Kill David Arquette, and it's sort of a sarcastic hymn. That's what I like to call it. And he heard the song, and he came down, and he played a show with us basically he got on stage in a blood splattered white suit and it was this huge party in Houston because nobody everybody thought I was making it up they said <laughs> oh he's not really coming it's just Jeff lying to us but I was like no it really happened and that was that was a lot of fun just to see all the people there but honestly the best moments of the band the times that I was happiest was when we were when we were in the studio um, especially me and Christy the other singer in the closet at Blue Room, we had a little tiny closet. We would sit there with a CD player that we had just burned of the instrumental track, sitting back to back, writing completely incongruent lyrics. And then we'd turn around and say, "What do you guys like?" Oh, I got something about a crippled girl being shot in space. What do you guys like? Uh, I've got something about an evil wizard. It's like, all right, put it together. We'll see how it works. And it would work out whenever you did it. So that to me is the best moment of the band. Just you know, dark lights, me and Christy back to back, coming up with insanity together. That's what I miss the most. So I guess another another phase in a band's lifespan that doesn't really get talked about much is the reunion tour. <laughs> yeah, um, we did do a reunion show. We got together um, December of last year uh, with uh, Sky Blue 72, who was leaving. Uh, they were actually going on hiatus at the time. 
And we did this big, huge reunion show, and we went on all the radio stations, we were in all the papers and everything, and the thing that was fun about it was being in the same room with these people that I love so much that I, I really would not rather hang out with anybody in the world besides Black Math, but, you know, there's so much... There's so much that goes into the DIY ethic, the do-it-yourself ethic. There's so much you have to do all yourself, and sometimes it really is just like pulling teeth. And, you know, you realize how tiring it truly is to be in a band. So whether we'll continue to be doing anything, I don't know. Really what we'd love to do more than anything else is make a movie, kind of like Billy Nair's show and American Astronaut, that sort of thing, or Flaming Lips and um, Christmas on Mars. That's what I'd like to do, but... Beyond that, I, I really don't know where it is. The captain's up in Minnesota shooting coyotes at the moment. Christy's about to have a kid. I've got a seven-month-old. You know, people are busy. People got lives. Do you think you'll start another band? Um, I've I've got a couple of other things in the works. I'm I'm mostly writing right now, working for the press. I get paid to go to concerts, and that's a lot of fun. I'm working on a screenplay with a girl about cover bands in Houston Ooh. called uh, Band of Morons. So that's that's a lot of fun. She emailed me because she'd heard I was good with insane titles and lists from Joey Gare of the Chronicle. She said, oh, well, can you help me come up with some names of uh, cover bands, like bad names of car- cover bands? I was like, oh, cool. Uh, so I came up with Striper, uh, Fark Side of the Moon, uh, Being Kenny Loggins, and uh, <laughs> things about Extremely Freebird. Their whole set is just one long orchestral version of Freebird, which I still think would be a lot of fun for a band. Just yeah, jump on stage, play one b- version of Freebird, and just get out. Yeah, you know, don't even say anything. It'd be great Something for everybody. So that's that's mostly what I'm doing right now. But I'm hoping to do some recording here in the near future.